listeners, we welcome you to the sanctuary on this morning where we come to worship and praise the Lord on this morning. Come on, I just thought about this morning a reason to praise him. Come on, I got a million and one reasons to praise him, but when I start thinking about it, my mind gets overwhelmed by the praise that's on my heart. When we come to praise him, can you come up with a reason right now? Just because he's good, he's been kind, he's been merciful, he's been mighty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, we praise your holy name in the sanctuary. Come on, just come up with your reasons on this morning to praise God. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands, clap your hands. Come on, we get ready to praise God in this place. We get ready to raise our praise in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Get this old song and say, oh, oh.
soul cries out a hallelujah. I know you have heard that before. But just lift your voice and say hallelujah. Yeah. What he's done for me. Come on, he's still blessing me. Come on, he's keeping me alive. He's all over me. Come on, church of your neighbor. Wherever you are in the sanctuary of your home. Wherever you are, if you're on the road, and say, he's done it for me. He did it for me, just for me. excited for having another opportunity to worship and give God praise, honor, and glory. We thank you all for joining us this morning, for blessing us with your presence, whether virtually or right here. We give God praise because you took, a took the time out to bless us. We thank you, God. We just love you and we praise your holy name. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. I just want to give you a couple of announcements real quick. Um, we are going to celebrate and recognize our wonderful graduates of the 2021 school year. We give God praise for you young people because we need you for our future. So if you have any graduates in your family, of Abner Baptist Church, please submit the names of those graduates at abnerchurch at prodigy.net or call Sister Alma Gordon at 804-749-3709, number three. The deadline is Friday, June 25th, 2021. We are excited to get ready for this celebration. The exact time and date is to be announced later. Again, we give God all the honor, glory, and praise for our young people. We love and admire all the works that you are doing under these trying circumstances, but you kept on pressing forward and to God be the glory. We also want to remind you that the primary elections are June 8th. Okay, June 8th. So please, please remember to exercise your rights. A lot of people laid the foundation so that you have an opportunity to step out and exercise your rights. So please, June 8th, 2021, we need you to be out there and be ready for the primary elections. And as you all have already been, excuse me, as you all know, that we are here at Abner, through your Facebooks and through YouTube, we are here to worship. Even though we may not be in the sanctuary on this Sunday, but God is with us everywhere we go. So we give him praise, honor, and glory. And we just thank him again for you all. I love you all. And I right now wanna take a moment to just pray and give God praise for all of his mercy, all of his grace, all of his love and his faithfulness. May we pray? Oh, Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, dear God, for blessing us with another day. This is a day that you have made, dear God, and we are excited and we are going to rejoice in it. Dear God, I thank you for all those who have taken the time this morning to come out and line up and worship with us this morning on Facebook and on YouTube. We thank you, dear God, because even though we got the challenges of the world, sometimes we may be in a mindset of just not doing what you have called us to do. But this morning, you called us to rise up and you called us to worship. I give you praise, honor, and glory for our minister of music, dear God. I just thank you for blessing him so that he can bring forth the songs of Zion, dear God. I thank you for our drummer, dear God, who is faithful and come out to serve in his gifts, dear God. I thank you for the media ministry, dear God, who is so faithful just to come out and do your will because that is their ministry 
and they are called to make sure that your works get done. We love you, and we thank you, dear God, for our mighty good shepherd that you sent to the Abner Baptist Church. Pastor Jamal C. Hayes, dear God, we thank you for First Lady and his entire family who serve you so well, dear God. I thank you for touching his mind, his heart, and his spirit to continue to teach us, continue to guide us, and continue to lead us. Continue to have your hands on him and his entire family, dear God. We love him and we thank you for all that you have birthed through him. We just thank you for this church that we call Abner, dear God. We thank you that even though we can't always be here, but our doors are still not closed. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I ask in the name of Jesus right now, dear God, that if there is anyone who may be going through a loss right now, the world has so much going on. Touch them, dear God, in a mighty way. Lift their spirits up and remind them that you are a mighty comfort. You sent that comforter that we call Jesus Christ. There are some who are still carrying the burden of grieving, dear God. But we know as long as we continue to pray, you will raise them up out of their grief and help them to celebrate those that they have lost, dear God. In the name of Jesus, please just go by the hospital beds right now. Go by and touch those who may not be feeling well, dear God. We just ask you in the name of Jesus to touch them in a way that only you know how to do. Because all of your ways can be healing power amongst those who are weak right now, dear God. I even ask in the name of Jesus that you go upon those in the jail cells, dear God. They may be locked up, but they are not locked from you, dear God. Because your mercies are everywhere. You will grant them grace, dear God. You will show them that you love them in spite of who they are. We just give you praise, honor, and glory. Thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Can you all just say hallelujah and thank God right now? Have a moment of worship and just give him praise, honor, and glory. So thank you, God, for who you are and all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name, I pray.
and you're not just good sometimes. You're good all the time. So thank you, God, for who you are. I come to you this morning standing in for pastor to help out as a servant. I give God praise for who he is. I give God praise for First Lady just blessing and standing beside him. I give God praise for you, Abner. Even those who may be visiting with us, I give God praise for you. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your prayers. Right now, I won't hold you long. We plan to be quick, I hope. I just want to come to you for a few moments from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10. And it reads as this. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not of works. Lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship. Created in Jesus Christ for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. How many of you know that you are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus? How many of you know that for by grace you have been saved through faith? I said, how many of you know that for by grace you have been saved through faith. Hallelujah. And it's not by anything that you did. It is a gift of God. I come to you a brief moment with the title, Share Your Grace and Mercy Story. Share Your Grace and Mercy Story. May we pray? Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, dear God, giving you praise God and glory, praising you for glory and grace, dear God. We thank you in the name of Jesus for blessing us to be able to worship you in such a wonderful way. We love you, God, but right now it is a time for us to touch on your word, dear God. I ask in the name of Jesus that you remove doubt that you remove anything that may block me from speaking with clarity and giving your word with understanding. I ask in the name of Jesus that someone get touched, dear God, even if it's just one, that they may be touched to change their ways. They may be touched to change their mind. They may be touched to let go of some stuff and pick up some ways from you. In Jesus' name, I ask you to touch someone in a mighty way that you, they too can share their mercy and grace story, dear God. In Jesus' name, we honor you, we love you, and we thank you. Amen. Share your grace and mercy story. Of course, I don't know why, but I always um, have a moment of struggling. Sometimes things will come to me and I get excited and I go, ooh, I can't wait till I have the opportunity to share this word. Well, a lot of those things are still tucked away in a folder because it has not been revealed to me to share yet. And I thought I was going to be able to use one for you all today. But however, in the last week, I keep hearing songs that touch my spirit. And it's about grace. It's about grace. And it's funny because I love these songs that I hear. And one very upbeat song that has me bopping in my car is God's Grace by Luther Barnes. He starts off saying, how did I make it all these years? How did I make it this far? Through the valley and over the hills. 
And then he proceeds on, but he gets to that part to let you know how he made it. He made it because it was God's grace. Do you have a story about grace and mercy in your life that you can share with someone that may lift their spirits up? It's so funny how I love all these new songs that are about grace and mercy. But I tend to wiggle my little way on back to your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. And I want to with man. And unity 
was the core purpose of the book of Ephesians. The great truth of Christianity is that God is uniting the world to himself. Do I have any believers out there that feel united with Christ, that know that there is nothing that can separate them from the love of God? Are you united with Christ this morning? Are you ready to share your grace and mercy story so someone else can get introduced to Christ? So someone else can reunite with this mighty God, this loving God who has an overwhelming abundance of mercy and grace. Are you sharing your story with someone? Are you letting them know that God's grace and mercy brought you through? Are you letting them know that you are living right now because of all that he's done? Are you thanking him? Are you praising him? His grace and mercy brought you through. It is a wonderful thing to be able to shout and just think about it and just think about all that he's done. I read the Sunday school lesson about Jonah and it's a funny thing because when I heard all these songs about grace and mercy, I thought about it. What if he was here? Suppose he started singing when he jumped out of that fish and God, he recognized, whoa, three days and I'm still here? All in his disobedience, God pulled him up. Amen? How many times have in your disobedience God pulled you up? Not only did he pull you up, he pulled you out of some stuff. You've been dead in many transgressions. Some of you may have been dead in alcohol. Who knows? Just swimming, laying there, thinking that that's your savior, but it won't. Some of you may have been dead in drugs, laying there, getting high, doing what you want to do, not of God's will, just laying there thinking that you're having a good time, worshiping the people around you that are just like you, but that won't it. Some of you may be worshiping your pocketbook, your wallet, your bank account, thinking that you all that higher than everybody else, but that ain't it, because none of that can be taken with you. Oh, you need to be worshiping the one that we worship, the one that gives us an abundance of mercy and grace. You need to be worshiping the living God who sent a wonderful sacrifice for you and for me. That's who you need to worship. That is an everlasting love. That is an everlasting gift. It doesn't fade away. It's not too small. If you can never outgrow it, it's yours to have. All you got to do is say, here I am, God. Come get me. I'm right here. Please forgive me, God. I love you. I don't heard so much about you. I want some of that mercy and grace. You too have a right to it. How? What is it that I need to do to have a story to tell about grace and mercy? How am I going to have a testimony? Somebody like me. I'm telling you right now. Somebody like me has a grace and mercy testimony. The first thing you need to do is right there in the scripture. It says, tell how it is by grace that you have been saved. How is it that you have been saved when you were laying in sin, not caring about yourself or those around you, not even acknowledging that the only reason you're here is because a mighty God sent you here. He told you to go right and you went left. How is it that you can tell people that you've been saved? Titus chapter 2 verse 11 says, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation in all people. So I don't care what nobody tell you. You ain't never too dark and too low to lay there. You can rise up into God's marvelous light through his forgiveness and his love and get that grace and mercy. You can do it. All you got to do is say, here I am, God. Come get me. The appearance of grace is a reference to Jesus Christ and his appearance on earth. The grace Jesus brought was responsible for bringing salvation again for all people, not certain people, not the, the leaders that are sitting high and speaking to the low. No, it is for all people. All you got to do is just cry out to him. Another way, if you look in the scripture, you can see what to do to have your mercy and grace story or your grace and mercy story is tell how we can be connected with his grace. It tells you right there, you got to have faith. Be connected through faith. God will hear you. That's your connection. You can't keep going to God being doubtful. You got to have faith and believe and just trust and wait on the goodness of the Lord. 
have faith. Romans chapter 5 verse 2 says, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand and we boast in hope of glory of God. Go tell it. Don't brag about yourself because it's not your works. Go tell the goodness of God. Tell how he released you out of the bondage that you was in. Tell how he set you free. Go tell it. Boast of the goodness of God. Have faith and know, okay, my lights might have got turned off, but I had some candles. I did what I had to do before the sun went down. Thank you, God, for the sun. Thank you, God, for the candle. Don't let anything have you worried down and held in bondage that you can't recognize the goodness of God. Because no matter how bad things get, you can still have faith. Another way that you can testify and tell your grace and mercy story. Tell how grace is a gift, a gift that you will never outgrow. Grace is the gift of God that saves one from sin. It keeps us in a path to God. It helps us to be able to do anything because no nothing is impossible through God, right? We know that long as we trust and believe him, we can do anything. And it takes time for you to practice that faith and trust and believe that in his time, everything is going to go according to the plan. God helps us to fulfill the purpose that he has laid before us to serve in his kingdom. Go tell, tell and share of your grace and mercy story. Another thing that you can do is God's grace is available, as I said, to everyone at all times. Recognize that gift, hold on to it. It's not going anywhere. It's just waiting for you. The grace of, the gift of grace and mercy, the gift of loving God, knowing that he sent Jesus for you, the gift of sacrifice, the gift of forgiveness, the gift to know that there is nothing like him and there is nothing too hard for him, the gift. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse eight says, and God is able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. The word has nothing but good news for us. It's going to tell some trying stories, but those stories are only being told so that you can recognize it ain't just happened to you. Everything that's happening today has happened then. Nothing is new. I bet you the woman at the well, when she saw that gift standing there, and he touched her and gave her a word. When she ran, she testified. She talked about grace and mercy. She had her grace and mercy story. Come on now, all of you got a grace and mercy story. You should be shouting and giving God praise. Thank you, God, for my grace and mercy story. I am going to share it. I am going to tell it. You know how the song at Christmas time, everybody loved to sing it? Go what? Tell it on the mountain. So we need to stop just singing it at Christmas. We need to sing that like it be a song of the day. Go tell it on the mountain to remind us of what we need to do to share grace and mercy story, right? So go tell it on the mountain. I can hear my cousin running in there. Go tell it on the mountain. Go! Go tell it on the mountain. Let everybody know of his mercy and grace. Let everybody know of his love and his faithfulness. Don't hold it to yourself. He allowed you to go through something so that you can be a living testimony. Let everybody know. He's giving us this word as a guide. He's giving us these lessons to teach us that we are not alone. You too can come out the belly of your dark, deep, wrong. You too can just rise up and let go and move and let God. You too can be a mighty servant. It don't have to be no title in front of your name. If you look at the word, they don't have no title. It didn't say Pastor Paul. It said Paul. He may have given the word, but it don't, it's not about a title. So don't let the title fool you because it has nothing to do with the title. It's all about you serving God. So I'm asking you, is anybody out there going to run and share their grace and mercy story? Are you going to sing and shout? I'm going to tell it on the mountain. Are you going to let the world know? I am a child of the living God. There is none who is higher than him. I thank him and I praise him because I don't know where I would be if it wasn't for his love and his mercy and his grace. I thank you, God, for all that you see in me when nobody else saw it in me. I thank you, God, when some people just wake up every morning to speak negativity over my life. I thank you, God, that you give me a word to let me know I am somebody to you. And that's all I need to be is somebody to you, dear God. It doesn't matter what others think. I love you because of what you think of 
of me, God. You say I am somebody to you. Thank you for your grace and mercy. I thank you that I got a story to tell. I thank you that you gave me a story to shout about because your grace and mercy story started with me when I recognized and I was introduced that you sent one here for my sins. You already knew that I was going to mess up. You knew that I was going to fall down. You knew that I was going to lay low. You knew that I won't forget up until I got ready. You waited for me. I'm so glad that I got a grace and mercy story to tell. I'm so glad that I can shout and raise my hand and say hallelujah. I'm so glad that I can stand right here and let everybody know that I ain't ashamed to tell you. I might not be on the mountain right now, but I'm standing right here shouting as loud as I can that I serve an awesome God. He sent his grace and mercy to me. And my story said, rise up child, I got something for you to do. I'm going to show you that it may not always come out right, but you're going to let people know that I am a living God. You're going to let people know that way back when I looked at you and I knew that I was going to have to rise you up. You gonna, I am here to let people know that you love me so much that you sent your only begotten son. They, they beat him down. Everything was for me and for you. He took on the sins of the world. They stabbed him. They beat him. He bled. He crawled. He pleaded, but he knew that he had to do the will of God. Oh, it wasn't a, it didn't look like a good thing at the time. Oh, but it was. So then they stretched him high. They let him hang there for a while. People was moaning, some people were shouting. But it was okay, because he already knew God had a plan. And my favorite thing about this story is he looked beyond Calvary. And he, I said it before, he went way back. He went way back. Not back to the past. But to the future. Y'all know the title, Back to the Future. He went to the future. And he knew Louise was going to be standing there in some mess. And he said, I'm hanging up here for you, girl. I'm waiting for you. So he's doing the same for you. He's hanging there for you. Won't you join him today? Won't you unite with him so that he know that you really want to tell your grace and mercy story? Come on. I know there's somebody out there that wants to let go of all that stuff that's been holding them down. And they want to release it, like me, and be free to let go and let God so you can have your grace and mercy story. You are his chosen one. He wants you to testify on his goodness. He wants you to be like me, to rise up. He didn't just hang there to just hang there. Oh, the story said that he died. Then they took him down and they put him away. And time went by. And on that third day, God was still thinking about us. He was thinking about me, and he was thinking about you. And he rose them up from the dead. That's why he is everlasting. And in order for you to have your grace and mercy story, you got to rise up. Just like he did for you from the dead, you got to rise up out of some dead stuff and tell him thank you and shout hallelujah and let him know that your heart is ready to be united with him so that when your time comes, you can rise up in that heavenly place with him and the angels gonna be singing, everybody gonna be shouting that you made it and you can go back and sing that song, your grace and mercy, your grace and mercy brought me through. Please, if there's one out there, I'm asking in the name of Jesus, that if you have been laying in some stuff that's dark, that, that's holding you down, I'm asking to let go of all those transgressions and cry out to the Jesus that has come for each and every last one of us. Please, give your life to Christ today. And maybe there's one out there who may be looking for a church home. Yes, we doing Facebook Live right now but we can still be your church family because we're going to be coming back soon. we already coming back on four Sundays. That's just the beginning. And then there may be one who strayed away like me. There was a moment that I knew who Jesus was, but I strayed away. And God circled me right back and I rededicated my life. Maybe you are like me and you need to let go of some stuff and rededicate your life so that you can start your grace and mercy story. Come on. Won't you 
Let God know how much you love him. Have faith. Trust and believe in his story. He loves you. Please. Just keep praying, you all. We got a world that needs every last one of us. I thank you. And I give God praise. And I hope this word touched somebody's soul today. I hope this word touched somebody's mind, their heart, and their spirit. Most importantly, I hope it touched you enough to not hold your story to yourself. I hope it touched you enough to go share your grace and mercy story. Pop up on the job and just tell her. Just pop up and say, hey girl, how you doing? And just start talking about your grace and mercy story. If they look at you a little crazy, just shout hallelujah. And remind them that you serve a living, a living God. And then go on about your way. Just give them something to think about. Won't you do it with me? Won't you unite with Christ and share your grace and mercy story? I know you're going to do it. I'm going to have faith. I'm going to trust and I'm going to believe. And I'm going to keep each and every last one of you in prayer that you share your grace and mercy story. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. continue to just touch every single person who is under the sound of my voice, dear God. As we are preparing to leave off and go on our own way, I ask in the name of Jesus that we do not leave your presence. We continue to share our grace and mercy story. Continue to watch over everyone and keep them safe. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.